Hello everyone, the aim of this video is to help you memorize the origin and insertion of all posterior forearm muscles. So the posterior forearm muscles are a group of extensor muscles that help in extension of the forearm. You can classify the posterior forearm muscles into two types of groups, the superficial muscles and the deep muscles. We will be learning the origin and insertion of all the superficial and the deep muscles of the posterior forearm in this video. If we notice the superficial muscle group that I have mentioned over here, it has six muscles and they are all extensor muscles except for one which is the brachioradialis which we keep it as the odd man out. So if you notice except for the brachioradialis and the extensor carpi radialis longus, all of these other four muscles will originate on the lateral epicondyle while these two will originate on the lateral supracondylar ridge. So you need to keep in mind that all of them of the superficial group except for brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus will originate on the lateral epicondyle. How do we memorize the lateral supracondylar ridge and the lateral epicondyle as the two origin points? So we have two muscles here extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis. So the words longus and brevis indicate that longus is a longer muscle while brevis is a shorter muscle. So a longer muscle has to start from up. So if you see my annotation over here on the diagram, the longus muscle starts here on the lateral supracondylar ridge. It starts up whereas the brevis muscle starts down. So for a brevis to reach here and for the longus to reach here, the distance travelled will vary based on where they originate and therefore origination of the longus is on top while brevis is at the bottom indicating the distance they travel to reach the point of insertion. So that's how we keep in mind that the longus originates on the lateral supracondylar ridge while brevis and the other muscles will originate on the lateral epicondyle. Even the brachioradialis will originate on the lateral supracondylar ridge. Whereas the brachioradialis, if we look at the name itself, it's quite unique and different. And therefore, its insertion point is also quite different. It inserts on the styloid process, which is here, located here. So the brachioradialis will insert over here on the styloid process. So I'll just annotate all of this with different colors so that it's easier to follow. Brachioradialis, the origin is on the lateral supracondylar ridge. It's a different muscle, so its insertion is also different, which is the styloid process. So this is how we have our brachioradialis. Now next, the extensor carpi radialis longus. So let's do that with blue. Extensor carpi radialis longus, again the lateral supracondylar ridge origination because it's above the lateral epicondyle and it has it's a longus muscle so the distance travelled has to be more. Now the insertion of the longus, extensor carpi radialis longus is metacarpal 2 while insertion of the extensor carpi radialis brevis is metacarpal 3. So how do you remember that metacarpal 2 and 3 are the insertion points? So one thing you need to keep in mind is that the thumb, also known as pollicis, we keep that aside because the thumb has its own set of muscles that help it move. So for all tricks, we keep the thumb, that is the pollicis muscles aside. We are talking about the extensor carpi radialis muscle. So it has to be on the side of the radius. Since it has to be on the side of the radius, these two fingers are on the side of the radius because we do not consider the thumb because it has its own set of muscles. Therefore, the extensor carpi radialis muscles are associated with these two fingers that is digits 2 and digit 3 because we keep the thumb aside. So, these digits 2 and 3 are on the side of the radius. So, therefore, they will insert on the metacarpal of these two digits. Now, how do we memorize that longus inserts on metacarpal 2 and brevis inserts on metacarpal 3? So, we just need to memorize that brevis inserts on metacarpal 3. So, if we look, brevis has the letter B. And the letter B has a hidden 3 in it. Therefore, extensor carpi radialis brevis will insert on metacarpal 3, while extensor carpi radialis longus will insert on metacarpal 2. So, this point that I have drawn here is the longus, which is originating on lateral supracondylar ridge. The longus muscle will insert onto the metacarpal 2. Whereas, I have brevis now. Brevis will originate on the lateral epicondyle and insert onto metacarpal 3. Now next we have extensor carpi ulnaris. Now we know that except for the brachioradialis and the extensor carpi radialis longus, all of them originate on the lateral epicondyle if they are in the superficial muscle group. So there is no question there. We draw the origination point here on the lateral epicondyle. 
Now ulnaris. Ulnaris meaning associated with the ulna. Therefore, it will insert on the metacarpal of the finger that is on the ulna side. Now, as we look at the diagram, we realize that the pinky finger is on the side of the ulna. Therefore, it will insert onto the metacarpal of the pinky finger. So, let's just draw its insertion point inserting on the base of metacarpal 5 because it's on the side of the ulna and the muscle is extensor carpi ulnaris. Now, next we go to the extensor digitorum. We know they all have the same origination point. Lateral epicondyle. Now, digitorum. Digitorum meaning it's the, it's the plural form of the word digit. Digit means finger. Digitorum means fingers. So, it is associated with all fingers except the thumb. Because like I said, we keep the thumb aside because it has its own set of muscles. Digitorum is associated with four fingers. That is the index finger, the middle finger, the ring finger and the pinky finger. Another key point that we need to keep in mind is that all the muscles that are associated with the digits except for the thumb muscles are going to insert onto the extensor expansions of their respective fingers. Diagram will insert onto the extensor expansions of the respective fingers. Similarly, we have the next muscle which is the extensor digiti minimi. So, we know that this has to insert on the extensor expansion of the digiti minimi. Digiti minimi meaning the pinky finger. So, if I had to draw that, originating on the lateral epicondyle and inserting onto the extensor expansion of the digiti minimi. So, the next group of muscles that we are going to talk about is the deep muscle group. So, the deep muscle group, if you notice, they are associated with two fingers, the thumb and the index finger. So, the way I keep in mind the deep muscle group is the thumb and the index finger associated muscles along with the supinator is the deep muscle group. Now, let's look at each muscle individually. So, we look at the supinator first. Let's look at supinator first. So, I'll annotate with red. So, supinator is a muscle that helps in supination. During supination and pronation, the radius rotates around the ulna. So, how I keep this in mind is radius starts with R and rotates starts with R. So, the radius rotates around the ulna during supination. Therefore, its insertion point is all the parts of the radius that are exposed which is if you notice that if you look at your hand in the supinated position you'll notice the radius is on the lateral side. So, in the anatomical position the radius will be on the lateral side and all parts of the radius except the medial side are exposed or are open for attachment. Now, why is the medial side not open? The medial side of the radius, which I am highlighting here in red in the image, the medial side of the radius has the interosseous membrane attached on it. Therefore, the medial side is not exposed. But the posterior, anterior and lateral side of the radius are exposed. And those are the site of attachment for the supinator. So, the insertion point of the supinator is the exposed parts of the radius, which is the posterior, anterior and lateral radius. So, the supinator is associated with supination. While supinating, the radius rotates around the ulna. Therefore, the supinator will insert on the exposed parts of the radius, all the exposed parts of the radius, which is the anterior, posterior and the lateral side of the radius. And it originates on various ligaments. The supinator originates on various ligaments which are the annular and collateral ligaments which are the ligaments associated with the elbow as well as the lateral epicondyle and the supinator crest on the ulna. The lateral epicondyle is on the humerus, supinator crest is on the ulna and we have the annular and collateral ligaments and it will insert onto the radius. So, we are done with supinator. Now, we will talk about the extensor indices. So, when you extend your index finger, you are pointing at someone. When you flex it, you are pointing at yourself. When you extend it, you are pointing at someone. So, when you flex your pointer finger, you are indicating I or me. When you extend your index finger, you are indicating you. And therefore, the extensor indices will originate on you, which is ulna. And all these muscles of the deep muscle group, except for the supinator, will have the interosseous membrane as a point of origin. So, we must keep that in mind that interosseous membrane is a common origin point for all the deep 
posterior forearm muscles except for the supinator. Now since the extensor indices is associated with a single finger and like I had explained in the superficial muscle groups that if you are associated with a single finger except the thumb they will insert on the extensor expansions of the respective finger. So the extensor indices will insert on the extensor expansion of the index finger. Now we have the pollicis group. So pollicis muscles are muscles associated with the thumb because pollicis means thumb. Now we have extensor pollicis longus and we have extensor pollicis brevis. Longus indicates that it has to travel a longer distance. Brevis indicates it has to travel a shorter distance. So therefore the extensor pollicis longus will originate further away and insert further away while extensor pollicis brevis will originate close by as well as insert close by. So now if we look at the ulna and radius, we know that the ulna is away from the thumb while the radius is close to the thumb. Therefore, ulna might be the origination point of the longus and radius might be the origination point of the brevis. Now if we look, ulna is the origination for the longus, radius is the origination for the brevis. Now if we look at the thumb as a whole, let's look at just the phalanx. So this is the proximal phalanx and this is the distal phalanx. Therefore, longus might be inserting on the distal phalanx and the brevis might be inserting on the proximal phalanx. Let's look at the point of insertion. Longus is the distal phalanx, whereas brevis is the proximal phalanx. So here we've sorted out the extensor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis. And like I have mentioned, the interosseous membrane is common in all of the deep muscle groups except for the supinator. Now we have the final muscle which is the abductor pollicis longus. So let me do. If you look at the word abductor, it has the letters A, B, C, D. It has all letters. Therefore, it will originate from everywhere. Which means it will originate from the radius, the ulna and the interosseous membrane. And the abductor pollicis longus will insert onto, since it's a pollicis muscle, it will insert onto a bone of the thumb and it will insert on the base of the metacarpal of the thumb which is here so it will insert over here these are the superficial and deep muscles so this is a trick that i had for memorizing the origin and insertion of the posterior forearm muscles i hope this video has helped that's all we have for today thank you